Hi everyone. Today I have a 1949 Philco. I think they're supposed to say Transitone. Transitone. But it's uh, kind of washed off. But the Philco shows up. It appears to be Bakelite. Bakelite items. Uh, this is the tuner, the pointer, it works, this is your on and off, no tone, I don't know why they call it transitone, uh, the case is in good shape, it looks like somebody's been in it, this don't even look right. That's tightened down, too. And that's not even taken. But it's uh, model 49504. It's not got a transfer, right? No. Now, they had the cover off. I don't see the clips on it or anything. I got it at the flea market. Uh, so, I got clips for that. That's no big deal. But uh, here's the look at it inside. What does this say? Part number 10524P. They don't mean nothing to me. Model 49504. And then it says dash 121. There's something here. I probably bet that's for antenna. I'm not sure. It looks like somebody's been in it too. Like I said, because this antenna wire. It's disconnected. Is this one connected? Maybe the oh yeah, that was disconnected too. Someone's been in here. It's got the uh, except for minus the uh, rectifier. They're all locked all too anyway. As you can see, this cord here is just brittle bare wires so that's got to be replaced so let me go ahead and take the buttons off and uh that's the only thing that's holding that in is just that one screw unbelievable i don't see anything else well let me get the buttons off first the knobs oh they come off hell that ain't too bad well, I think they've been in here. I think somebody's been in here. I know they have. The wires are desoldered. Okay, I got the knobs off. Let me get... hope I ain't in the way of the camera, and I am. It's usually a standard. What the hell is that? Why isn't it not going in all the way? Well, I guess it will. Somebody's been in it. Because that wasn't as tight as it should be. Oh, there it is. Got to watch that antenna back there. Lift up over that antenna. There we go. That antenna's probably going to walk out anyway. See if we can pick it up by the eye. Yeah. A little stuck. Trying to watch that antenna. Best as possible. Somebody didn't bother. I probably didn't, couldn't get it running. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Somebody was experience and behind it reach it there up the end antenna is coming right out with it there it is it needs to be going back down in there but that's after the chassis goes back in what the hell is that it looks like a, oh, it's a piece of solder there's something to melt there's the wax right in there a wax he melted let's take a look up under the there goes the solder on my floor somewhere I'll never find it I don't like I need it, but I don't like it. Side on my floor. Here we go. 
out of the chassis. Look at that. What is that hanging there for? Back out a little bit. Ain't this mounted on anything? It's just hanging there? Okay, I see what they're doing here. They're, these are not... They're wrong. This orange and blue are wired together on this capacitor, giving you 30 microfarad. And the same thing with this one, orange and blue, 30 microfarad. This red is not connected. This red is connected, and that red is supposed to be 20 microfarad, which is correct. But one should be 30, one should be 25, and then a 20. So what they did is they put them in parallel. And the 20, did I say the red? Yeah, the 20 microfarad just is using that one. So, guess what? And and the thing of it is, is there one is supposed to be 30. Say, uh, okay, then the next one should be 25. They're putting 30, and then the 20. So that's easy enough to fix. Just a matter of where I'm putting them. We're going to have three caps in there. I took that little bracket off. It's cheap anyway. So. I'll start there. Put a little power to it and see what happens. I'll get back with you when I get these replaced. I finally hopefully got the capacitors. 150 volt. Uh, cap so they're not that big so I took that little clip out and put these three in there called for a, what was it a uh, a 30 30 no I'm sorry a 30 a 25 and a 20 well I don't have they don't have 25 so I used a 30 30 and a 20 and I replaced these two resistors here because they were way out of tolerance and they were right there in the circuit and it would have been really too hard to get into there. So those resistors were replaced and that filter circuit. I also replaced this stupid wire here when they went in here and had at it. They melted this wire. So I put a new green wire in there. So this here is paper taped on there. I don't. I think I don't know if it came from the manufacturer that way, but it's so dark over the years. What is this? Seventy-four years old. Nineteen forty-nine. That's why it's a model forty-nine something. It's funny paper, but it's just so brittle. It's bubbled up, so I'm going to take a, a, some warm rags or something and get the rest of this off, and I'll probably put some uh, white on there. I'm not sure. Well, here's the two resistors that I replaced. So far, I had to do that. Okay, that's off. Now my power cord that I made up, put this in the, uh, I say transformer, turn this off, turn this on, okay, and what kind of voltage, you know I should turn that thing down, around 47 volts, that's uh, just to see the DVT comes on. Nada. I'm hearing hum, and I've only got that at 30, 46 volts. Turn this down. That hurts. Oh, 
188 volts. Wow, I'm getting stuck. Um, shouldn't have that. I uh, checked the tubes, and uh, believe it or not, that uh, audio output tube is shorted. It's at uh, 508, 508, 508, 508, the power output, uh, two bits shorted. I always check for shorts before I proceed within the, uh, so there's the noise. And then the uh, other tubes are fine except for my 788, the converter tube, it's very weak. It's like 2% over the good area and then it takes a while before it to get to that and then it just stays there so I'll need to get a 788 and that definitely uh, at 5085 because it's shorted so I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the uh, recap and there's a lot of bad resistors in there Actually. as you can see I've got this thing uh, all the capacitors and resistors replaced. So I checked the, let me see, the variable tuner and my oscillator gang. It's going to ground and I checked. The antenna side was fine. And I did check the uh, print and the oscillator coil back down here. You're not, you ain't seeing it, but let's see if I can bring it down tap. Right there. Or my power, I put any power cord on. Uh, right there. It's, it looks like a blog. Uh, whatever. It reads the correct values close to it. And, but one side is connected to ground. Everything's hooked up to B minus, except for two areas in this schematic. Let me bring this out further. Well, anyway, this ain't the, the, the one. But there's the antenna, and one side of this oscillator coil is going to the actual chassis ground. The rest of it's going to B minus. It's not even uh, going to. Uh, chassis ground so this uh, second IF so I'm checking the IF now the first one is fine as far as uh, DC resistance but the second one's it's got a uh, a 47k resistor inside this IF I mean it's giving me strange uh, DC resistance so what I have, I don't have no power to this uh, radio. I'm just injecting 455 uh, kilohertz. I think that's the tuner. That's what you align it by. And I have no uh, modulation. I have the modulation cut off. And I got it at 25... Uh, what the heck is that? Millivolts as far as the uh, amplitude. But here's how I check it. All the way I really can check it. Let me see. So if I bring it up, I want you to see the oscilloscope also. Now it looks a little dirty, and I think that's the resistor in that. Let's see if I can bring that up just a little bit here on the amplitude. We'll go amplitude. We'll go 50. Hello, we'll go microvolts. We'll look at the difference in that. I don't care for that. Amplitude. Let's go 50 millivolts. There we go. Just a bigger wave. Okay, now that's going through the resistor. I got the uh, signal generator going to the primary side of the uh, IF transformer. And my oscilloscope, I've got it hooked up. All right, now that's going through the resistor. Then there's another middle 
tap where that uh, I can put that and you'll see the difference. It's showing it's working. It's showing uh, floor 45, floor 46, and it's just fluctuating. Okay, that slug's working. You can see the, uh, the waveform. I hope you can. See it get bigger and, and smaller. I'm going to max this one out here. Oh, I can go really high. Uh, let's see. It's a happy medium. Right there. I got uh, the new output tube. And I uh, went ahead and started to uh, attempt to align it. But uh, I wasn't getting any uh, modulation. Uh, no 400 hertz, even tried 1000 hertz, nothing. It was just. So I couldn't proceed at that time. So I went to troubleshoot it further and uh, found out there's a. Well, I knew there was, but there's a 47. K resistor inside the IF can of the second IF can connected to the uh, secondary of the second IF so I went in there and it was high it was a 20 percent or a 47 K I forgot what it was but it was really high so I replaced it put it back together and then still acted uh, funny Stuff was going on, and uh, checked it again as far as uh, DC resistance, and I got uh, out of I forgot what I got on that secondary. It was something on the second IF secondary, and uh, it was like in the thousands, or I uh, maybe a mix, a meg or something ohms. I go something's wrong, so I had to take it back, and I found out that only one strand of that fine hair wire that comes off the coils it was just on there so I cleaned it up and we soldered that back on that corrected that problem I got uh, the right DC resistance on that so now I got it and then I was able to align it but also when I had this one apart that would be this second I up here uh, I blew it out with some uh, compressed air in a can, you know, and the little parts of uh, mic pieces were uh, all over my uh, work table here, and I go, wow. But at least I was still able to uh, adjust when I got my modulation back. I was able to adjust the IS to the 455 kilohertz, so... I think they're okay, but this uh, radio is still not right. It's uh, I'm not gonna do it for it right now because I think I have to invest in a uh, you know you uh, invest in the uh, check out these tubes on uh well I checked it out on a Sencor and it's it was four areas to check and it all checked out good but uh, I know sometimes tubes check good and when you put them in a set they don't work and this is the situation here I put it on my uh, Hickok 533A and I got two sections checked this one here that's the 505 that's that uh, shorted one this one the 78 here showed shorted in my uh it didn't show it on the Sencor but it showed it on the uh Hickok 533A. So I'm thinking that uh converter tube is uh bad even though it just checks good. There's uh because the thing of it is I'm getting stations now but anything around under nine hundred 
it don't I can't pick up uh, the lower frequencies and that has to be in the uh, let me see if that schematic it's uh, definitely the 600 Hertz is from the antenna to after that converter to before it gets into the first IF. And I'm not getting that. I can't pick up any. Can't even uh, align it for that. It just lets you align it for. 1600 and 1500 and then when I did go to 600 no it wouldn't take it I think that converter tube is uh, really shot and I don't have another one to put in but anyway I, I did put this uh, this is uh, nothing but thinner paper and I only glued it from here there and there I put it in the uh, cabinet. I did clean up the case on it. To try to in a right, this is the paper they had on here. You can see the adhesive is on there. That was really dark. I don't know if that turned that dark or what. But I think I seen some on the Radio Museum where they wore dark. But I, again, over the years, I think. So I put it in the cabinet and it popped. I mean, this white was the ticket. Have you ever seen a time when it's you're not going in pursuit back in the cabin until I arrive get another two? We've never been uh, in terms of the frequency of pursuits and bailouts. I'm, I'm okay up to about 900 across this country. What do you to 1600, and then once it gets around eight, it's it's I wish they could not see too bad, but then anything out of that I can't get. I wish they could see. The number and volume of criminal acts against the citizens of the and state. Not invested, not I wish they could see how. But I did get it going, and they had this. I don't know if I mentioned it, but they had this bulb in there, the style like it was. That's uh, what I wish they could see. In 1891, which is a 14 volt, and it requires a 6.3, so I put a 47 in there. Bring in former acting. And that's going to be Mark Morgan. Plenty uh, bright enough. all this for Trump back when we had sensible policy, and I'm sure you watched this, and it just disgusts you because so, it was your job to manage that's it. this. I mean, you guys tried sometimes you just got to. Right, obviously it's a tough job. It's a long border. Um, Say, so, hey, how video, far am I going to go with this now? You know. Frustration. I mean, yeah, I, I think I'm disgusted. I am disgusted in an outfit, too. He gave some tools, authorities, and policies with which we, we created the most secure border. And I'm not going to buy a this converter, too. Not at this point. Years, I've served this country. I'm sick of working on this action because this is the first the, I got it all the way down. And intentionally unsecured the border. Yeah. <laughs> it's the tube. And there still could be something iffy with these uh, IS. I don't think so. It's the uh, IF, I mean the converter tube. Oh, this was where I did my alignment. I can take this off uh, and this. I just want to let you see what I did on the inside. Everything's been replaced. This coil is, uh, oscillator coil is fine. It's perfect. It reads right on money. There's my three. Electrolytics, all the other caps has been replaced. Everything is wired correctly. Even got the ground foil ends wired. That's the way I do them all the time anyway, but it doesn't take a few minutes to go through them all. Uh, several resistors. I think there only is like one or two in there that, I, that was the, I left. Everything's right. I'm getting the right voltages. So, I'm done with it. It's, I'm not happy with it because it's not the way it should be. But, nothing new. I don't want to sit there and invest it in a damn tube. So, excuse my language. And this has been a pain in the butt since I got started on it. It is what it is for right now. I'm putting it aside. Probably just throw it in a cabinet temporary so I can get this antenna back in so I don't destroy it. And later on, just put a note on the comment that it needs a 788 and another realignment as far as the uh, 
uh, oscillator and the antenna and uh, I should then be able to get my 600 frequency over here and actually 550 but no it's not but 550 to around 900 it should be as clear as all of these from 9 to 1600 so it is what it is right now I'm not doing dick with it anymore you suck hi everyone welcome back to part two on this uh, Phil Cole model 49504 radio that I had problems with where I didn't have any lower frequencies lower than 900 well I was to show you you don't give up I did go ahead and I purchased the uh, converter tube uh, you know I thought they were more expensive and what I got is a, a Sylvania. I love Sylvania myself. I even have light bulbs. I used to have trouble lights and I drop them and with any other bulbs with the incandescent bulbs they'd burn out but Sylvania every time I drop them no the elements didn't burn out on it. Well anyway this is a joint Army Navy Sylvania. Where's the number at? 7A8 and then this was that one 5085 the output tube that's the output tube that was shorted that's why I was getting hum after I changed the filters real bad I didn't even handle control of the volume and then this is that uh, 788 that came out of there so I got it in there I did take it I cleaned out the uh, variable tuner uh, I took off the mica sheets on the oscillator and the antenna before I did it and I sprayed it down with contact cleaner real good and moved it back and forth open and closed and uh, then I took the micas and I cleaned them with a distilled water and a q-tip put them back in I re-lubed the uh, tuner with some grease in that bearing but because uh, it don't make sense like I say if, I, if you go down the lower you go the more capacitance you get the lower the frequency the more capacitance is in the tuning capacitor so I said well I don't know so I did clean it and I put the tube in and uh, this is it in, uh, in the making and it was sitting there. Now, this is at 700 has taken this jewel of a, of a movie uh, directed by Alejandro Monteverde, Eduardo Verazzi's movie with Jim Caviezel and Mira. It, had, uh, it has a hum, and I had a comment somewhere with a hum on it. And they think that it's the radio. Well, it's not the radio. I'll show you. The Passion of Christ, but he, it goes through this movie with so much passion. You are you hearing the static now? You're not hearing a hum. It's from the transmitter. The spiritual war. You know, and we need to care for, like the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. We're okay, not now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put it on 600. That's 7. I'm going to put the uh, transmitter. It's 600. So it hurts show you that I got it it goes all the way now all frequencies so full scale let me see it should only take a few seconds because it's only uh there it is okay Prolific. Twenty-five percent are our children. Seventy-five percent are women. There's uh the aim is supposedly There's two 600. million children are are trafficked each year. Pretty close, cause that'd be about five fifty. The 
story is about Tim Ballard, who goes in and saves the children. Close. It's played by Jim Caviezel. Tim Ballard has his opera. If it's off any, because when you line it, well, on that shot, I didn't do the uh, Iron Transformers, because they were already done. But when I got the tube, I did uh, readjust natural because I had to take the mic out anyway. So I readjusted the uh, line, the uh, oscillator, and the antenna, and when you, and, and and the alignment is just uh, you set it at 1600 and you adjust the oscillator. Then you go to 1500, you adjust the antenna, and that's it. You don't do 600, and I know that before, but you know you still put your signal generator on 600 and go to 600, and you should get a a uh, modulation. Uh, 400 or 1,000 or whatever you injected into it, but uh, I wasn't getting that before I got it this time. And befriending or grooming, then intoxicating, alienating and isolating. It's got a lot of power. Broken today. Yeah. You know, but it's easily children are easily bought it. So that's it. Uh, it's ready to go in its cabinet. Like I said, if I got it, really just tweak it a little bit to get it right out of money. I can get in there. Short screwdriver and just a centana, that's it. Uh, so it just goes to show you, though, you just keep prevailing and uh, you can get them. I mean, I've never, AA5s, you just, you know, if there's something bad like a, a IF coil or a Osiris coil or something, something really bad. Because then perhaps you could just scrap it or something. Education, and and but so that and, wasn't the case here. Uh, our President Trump, and you know the I think the future of this country is with the left. So this uh, it's you done. Are more of a member of that uh, uh, group than ever. Thank you, Bob. Oh, well, again, you uh, hear keep that? Up the great work, Bob. Um, thank you. God bless you, Terry. Thank you. Now all you hear is static. So you don't see the hum, that's just... Good evening and happy Friday, everybody. I'm Mercedes Schlapp, filling in for Chris Plant. Jen Pellegrino is also off tonight. Now, here's what everybody's okay. talking about. Yeah, so that's an uh, had a lot to do with it. The 7 8 October, 7 8 October uh, converter mixer. It's a. Uh, had a lot to do with it. And cleaning this uh, tuner. I don't. We'll tell you why Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. You think it'd be the tuner because you go down to 900 times. Then you start increasing the uh, capacitance on, on it and then you don't have it. You think it is. Uh, Jason but it didn't because I had this one in there and uh, Washington reporter for Politico, Daniel it didn't help it. And CPAC chairman who so I'm really happy that uh, I got it going. Topping tonight's discussion. Now I can start on another one. As I get this in the cabinet and uh, That's what the any fine adjustment on the antenna down Joe to line up the numbers. Plan. Billion dollar student loan. Well, that's, it's got a pretty good sound. This plan from the start was one of the most egregious examples of executive. I can go a lot, lot louder, but I don't want to. So, yeah, that's it. So, uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to attack this one on part one, maybe take a little bit off the tail end of part one and attack this one on. I'm going to keep it short, like I'm doing, and showing you that I got it to work. And uh, you don't want to give up on stuff that, you know, you just walk away from them. Sometimes you find out that helps. It really does. But, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe got something out of it. Uh, I've never had that much trouble, really. Uh, maybe I have over the years. What's the... Uh, AA5s or AA6s, but just keep at them, you get them. Thanks for watching.